Is Al Heyman a promoter? Well, we don't really know, but he's a big mover and a shaker, and you know he's he's got he's got a, a, a quite, he's got a few hundred fighters, if not more. And I see down the line in years to come, Al Heyman and MTK being the top dogs in boxing. Bob Adams not going to be here forever. Don King ain't going to be here forever. Don King's only got about eight fighters at the moment, anyway, hasn't he? But Al Heyman, he's a big dog. Look what he's done with Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao fight. Uh, he's been involved with Mayweather for years. He's well connected with American TV companies. Uh, he's done really well. If you take all these guys that I'm gonna, these companies and promoters that I'm gonna mention now, there wouldn't be any boxing, would there? There wouldn't be any boxing. But uh, next guy I'm going to mention, Ludabella. I like Ludabella. There's something about Ludabella that I like. There's something about New Yorkers that I like. I like Teddy Atlas. Teddy Atlas is a man after my own heart because he tells it as he sees it. He's also been in prison, and obviously I've spent time in prison, a long, long time in prison. Uh, a lot longer than Teddy Atlas, put it that way. But so I take my hat off to Teddy Atlas for doing his time and moving on and finding, obviously, getting back involved in boxing and finding boxing as a sport and getting a living out of it. Good luck to him. But I like the I like Lou DiBella. Lou DiBella. Uh, he worked to HBO. Lou DiBella. Now, from what I know. He turned HBO upside down and made boxing great again. He, he started the After Dark series, didn't he, Ludabella? And I think he's been a stalwart in the boxing industry, Ludabella, for over for probably about 25 years. You could say he's been he's been in the thick of it. Ludabella's been promoting. For, he's probably had his promoter's license coming up 20 years because so, he signed those guys didn't he after the Australian Olympics the year Audley Harrison won gold I want to put it past Lou trying to sign Audley actually because he's got some balls on him hasn't he Lou De Bella he's got massive balls I think he had Zeb Judah Jermaine Taylor he had him uh, I think he might have even worked with Bernard Hopkins at one point, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but... Yeah, because he will have done, because Jermaine Taylor fought him twice, didn't he? I don't know if he'd signed Bernard Hopkins, though, but... I do know that Lou DiBella had a court case with Bernard Hopkins over, over some slanderous comments from Bernard. I'm not going to go into it, but I do know that Lou DiBella... Uh, it probably turned his life upside down because when you've got lawyers to pay and when you've got court cases hanging over you the stress over them is unbelievable I know myself because I've had court cases where not that I'm going to lose a load of money I'm going to lose time I'm going to be locked up with killers so I can understand Luda Bella going through the mincer and being put through that and he was found innocent and Bernard Hopkins probably from what I've heard he had to pay all Lou's legal costs well I hope he did but Lou DiBella won in court and he had his day but I did read somewhere and I think it's true that he had to remortgage his house just to prove a point because of the shit that goes on in boxing now <laughs> if I could sit here and tell you half the stories that I see and here and seeing writing on lawyers papers some of the things I've seen people's eyeballs would pop out because they have this opinion about certain people who come across as really nice people on TV you see these people on television they seem nice but deep deep down Boxing can be a horrible, horrible place and it can put you in a very dark place. And I don't doubt that Lou DiBella 
were in a dark place when he had that court case going on with Bernard Hopkins and he won it and good on him I'm pleased for him and that's when I be became a Ludabella fan when I read that and although I did like Ludabella when he had when Nazim Amis were going over to America and he fought Kevin Kelly I think that uh, Ludabella were involved then with that fight and uh, I think Ludabella got it with Naz. He got it what Naz could be and well we know what happened with Naz don't we? He went over to America and he got big dough didn't he? But Ludabella he's one of boxing's good guys. He's involved with Wilder, I don't know what capacity, whether it's manager, promoter or I know he's I know he's been involved with Wilder for years. And he's done great things. He's got that uh, Tevin Farmer, has he? Has he got Pro Grey as well? Don't quote me on that. He's got a good stable and he puts shows on. I mean, he's been in a Rocky movie. He's been business partners with 50 Cent, hasn't he? So Lou DeBella is a big dog. And I think that... I've seen a couple of comments the other day. Somebody said something about him on Twitter. I think that he has to be given respect for the longevity that he's been involved as a promoter. And don't forget he worked at HBO before he promoted. So he'll have seen some things in boxing. Luda Bell will have seen some things. He'll have seen people come and he'll have seen people go. And he's still there dining at the big table. And it's uh, something that can make your hair fall out, as Dennis will tell you. And it can also... What's the word? It can drive you crazy. Boxing is the only sport where you can get your brain shook, your money took, and your name in the Undertaker's book. And you don't have to be a boxer just for all that to happen. Trust me, there's things that go on behind the scenes in boxing that are not very pleasant, and you've got to have a bit of edge, and like I said, you've got to have balls, especially to be a promoter. So, Aggie Ludabella, all the respect in the world. So, shout out Ludabella. Now, Mick Hennessy. What can I say about Mick Hennessy? I like Mick Hennessy. He gets a lot of stick because he doesn't go on social media. He gets a lot of stick because he doesn't go to boxing after parties. Mick's not one of them guys that he's going to be at an after party, uh, you know, kissing ass. He ain't one of them. Mick Ennis is not an ass kicker. You know, Mick likes to go out for an evening meal and then, you know, have an early night. Night before a fight and after a fight, he'll have an early night. Very rare you get Mick Ennis at an after party. Very rare. He don't even drink, so... He likes a bite to eat, but don't we all? But Mick Hennessy, he's had Tyson Fury from debut. Huey Fury from debut. Chris Eubank Jr. from debut. Carl Froch from debut. Darren Barker from debut. Savannah Marshall from one fight in. She wore Mayweather for a debut. You know, he's had Lenny Dawes. David Walker. You know... Mick Hennessy is a big dog. Mick Hennessy finds talent. Right now, they say Tyson Fury is best heavyweight in the world. Tyson Fury went English, British, Irish, Commonwealth, European, world champion, all the belts plus Ring Magazine. The only belt he didn't get was the WBC belt. He went with Mick Hennessy from debut. Carl Froch, we know Carl Froch, don't we? English champion, British champion outright, Commonwealth champion, European guy won't fight him, two time WBC champion, WBA and IBF champion, 14 Super 6, 33 and 2. He started with Mick Hennessy from debut, Chris Eubank, IBO World Super Middleweight champion, started with Mick Hennessy from debut, Mick's also had James DeGale as well. He didn't have James from debut. So Mick Hennessy, you could say, I think he knows what he's on with. Would you say that, yes or no? I'd say Mick Hennessy knows what he's on with. He's got a deal with Channel 5. 
he don't get as much respect as he should do but like I said mix all right been always been all right with me uh, and he's still pretty shows on now he's just been out in Jeddah on it uh, we some uh, Yui Fury so good luck to me Ken I see I like him people need to get off his back and let him just do his job but if you put him inside of somebody like this next person who I'm going to talk about now Eddie Hearn Lord Fauntleroy, Sir Edward, Lord Eduardo, Little Spoilt Brat, Silver Spoon Boy. Right, Eddie Hearn was the school bully. He was the, the big loudmouth sat at the back of the class throwing paper at the, the, the swats sat at the front. That's what Eddie Hearn was, that's why he was kicked out of school. Because uh, he's a bully. You know, he, he's the kid with it. You know, the cheeky, horrible kid that you don't like. Well, that's what Eddie Hearn is. But he has also been handed matchroom on a plate. Now, when he started the matchroom boxing, restarted it up for his dad. It was on his knees. It was on its knees. But with his dad having influence at Sky, we're doing snooker and pool and darts and God knows what else they do. He managed to get Eddie some dates and squeeze everybody out and change the face of British boxing. And you could say for a, for a period, Eddie were good. But I think he's on the slide now. He will, he will tell you different, but Matron has been cancelling shows lately and working with other promoters. What does that tell you? It tells you that Eddie Earn is looking at America, he's put money before loyalty. In other words, if it came to a few quid or Eddie Earn ratting you out, he would rat you out. In other words, he would be disloyal. We can't say ratting out because he's not Sammy the Bull Gravano, is he? And, and we're not John Gotti. But what Eddie is, he will put money first. Money is Eddie Hearn's God. Let me tell you a little story. I went to Kel Brook Senchenko press conference. I went to see Eddie about something that sh well, I'm not going to speak about. However, after a chat, we spoke about the Carl Froch fight and Eddie said to me, there's some tickets for you and your girlfriend. This is like six years ago. There's some tickets for you and your girlfriend to come to the show t tomorrow night in Sheffield. Uh, it was Kelbrook Senchenko and we went but also when we got there there were a load of other people queuing for these tickets now the tickets were 650 quid each the tickets we got I thought that was really nice of him but he was also telling me about the Groves Frotch fight in Manchester and he said I said oh I'll have a couple of tickets for that and he said how much do you want to spend I said just stick me down for a couple hundred quid and he said, I'll sort you them for free. And I said, no. I don't want them for free. You just give me two tickets for free. So I gave him £200. And he said, no, you don't have to do that. I said, no, I insist. And he took the 200 quid. So Eddie likes a pound note. But I could hardly complain, could I? When he just gave me £1,300, two tickets to watch Kel Brook Senchenko. Brian Rose was on the car that night. Now, I did notice that somebody put a video out saying that I used to beg for tickets off Eddie and blah de blah beg? what? how's that begging? he gave me two tickets and I bought the Frotch Groves ones but the Frotch Groves ones they were a thousand pound ones that he gave me so the point I'm trying to make is I gave Eddie 200 quid there and he gave me what? over two grand worth of tickets for two shows so he's not such a bad old guy, is he, Eddie Hearn? He's not a bad person, is he? He's a good person. Eddie Hearn is a very, very hard-working man. But I think he fell in love with himself. And I think he's lost his way along the way. And Eddie has insecurities. I mean, I know people that have spoke to Eddie and, you know, he's been insecure about his hair falling out. And I know two people that have told me stories that Eddie is not happy about how big his uh, brujon is down there. He'd like it to be bigger. 
and you know he's ob he's obviously insecure and, he, and I've got a good friend of mine I'm not going to say who because if I did it it would cause problems but you know Eddie, Eddie spoke to me but you know he was unhappy about his physique a, a couple of years ago and uh, you know Eddie's just human like the rest of us you know everybody's built different aren't we you know what I mean not everybody is not all of us have got hair and six packs and you know unlike a donkey are we so everybody's different aren't we so but Eddie is just human he's not a machine he has insecurities like the rest of us but he's a damn good promoter and he can sell sand to the Arabs he is a very very good promoter he's the king of bullshit isn't he Eddie is the king of bullshit but the shows he's putting on at the moment are very very poor the show he's got on this weekend the Dillian White show is a very good show if it were non pay per view because they're charging pay per view for it it leaves a bad taste in my mouth but I will be cheering Dillian White on because Mark Tibbs is my pal but I will be cheering Dillian White on to win because I kind of appreciate the struggle Dillian White's had if Dillian White wasn't boxing he'd be out there he'd be a criminal so I know about that life I've been in, involved in that life and uh, no, I'm not involved in that life anymore but I've been there so I can understand I spent over 10 years in prison over a 12 and a half year period so nobody can come to me and tell me about the life that criminals lead because I've been involved in it so I appreciate Gillian White's struggle and his brother Dean they were, they, they've had nothing given them and they're making their way in boxing but in my opinion Dillian White's a world class fighter but him against Rivers should not be pay per view Dillian against Parker shouldn't be pay per view for the simple reasons they're not world title fights and the guys that are not born in England that's my opinion I'm entitled to it so but nobody can take anything away from Dillian White he's a world class fighter he's got a world world elite class left up and he's an handful for anybody on the day, even Tyson Fury. And Dillian White's only defeat, you'd have a question mark against that defeat because he was out of shape and he had an injury going into the fight. But he wasn't going to knock back a pay-per-view fight, was he? The money that he got from that pay-per-view fight, he changed his training team and he's invested in himself. He's got a world-class training team behind him, headed by Mark Tibbs. His dad Jimmy Tibbs will be involved, I dare say, at some stage. Mark will be picking his dad's brains daily. They're based out at Loughborough. And Dillian will be footing Bill for all that. Hotel, food, the job lot. He'll have masses, he'll have experts coming in, strength and conditioning, the all full works. And he has gone 9 0 with Mark Tibbs with five knockouts. So Dillian White has to be given respect for sensing that. I need to change things about, I need to be based at a certain base and correct the wrong. So, good luck to him. But, he's promoted by Eddie Earn, and you'd have to say that Eddie Earn probably could just squeeze it and be the world's best promoter at the moment. He is that good. It doesn't mean to say I have to like him and how he behaves, but I respect him for the times that I've spent in Eddie Earn's company and he was generous with me. And um, obviously every now and then I used to send Eddie some in post. I'm not going to say what, I think I sent him some Viagras the other week, didn't I? I've sent him picture frames and uh, I was going to send him some fake dog shit once. I didn't know, but I was going to do. Do you know why? Every time he was putting a shit show and I was going to send him fake dog shit just to let him know what I think. But I just email him now, I don't need to be wasting money, do I? But fantastic promoter and been good for British boxing but I think he's neglected his duties at Sky and he's letting a few people down at the moment chasing money so two seconds yeah that's okay that yeah use that one Nicola yeah why don't you use this one hang on uh, two seconds because videos are going up I have to get the thumbnails right it's a thumbnail of Eddie <laughs> we were just speaking about Eddie weren't we 
Use that one, Nicola, and put green writing on the white bit so it doesn't go into his hands where his hands are on his head. All right? Use that one. I'm filming at the moment. Eddie's like that. I've got a picture of Eddie like that. So we're going to use that as a thumbnail for Eddie Earn video. But, as I've just said there, Eddie Earn, fantastic promoter. He's done really well this last nine year, eight, nine year. Nobody can doubt that. Started off with Kelbrook, Darren Barker, Audley, Har Audley Harrison, Kelbrook, Darren Barker, Carl Froch, uh, Nathan Cleverly, or it Bell you. So, he done well. He did well for Tony Bell you, didn't he, Eddie Earn, didn't he? Well, Tony Bell you, was he beat? Who's Tony Bell you's best win? Tony Bell you's never won a, a, a well, never won a belt. British Commonwealth European World Champion, all vacant belts. Tony Bellew has got three wins over World Champion. Nathan Cleverly for no belt, pay per view. Two David A fights, pay per view, and he got levered by Usek, pay per view. Eddie Earns delivered and made Tony Bellew £12 million. So, as far as I'm concerned, Eddie Earns a fantastic promoter, but he's lost his way at the moment. Now, compare him to Mick Hennessy, the chalk and cheese, aren't they? But look at the guys that Mick Hennessy does something from debut with. Look at Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn and his dad Barry have only had one world champion from debut, Herbie Hyde, that wasn't in the GB team. The other guys that they've had from debut are Anthony Joshua, Carl Yafai, Charlie Edwards and Callum Smith. All four in the GB team. It, from Sheffield, all four of them in the GB team. ABI was it in the GB team? What has Eddie Hearn done with anybody else? Well, he nicked Carl Froch, he nicked Barker, Nick Cleverly, Nick Bellew, Nick David Price, Dave Allen Warrior. Who else is there? Jamie McDonald, E Warrior. But that's business, isn't it? You get over it, and I'm over all that now. I'm over it all, but it just took four or five years. You know what I mean? But, uh, but yeah, so Eddie Hearn, he's my number one. And I'm not going to name any number ones, but he's the number one boxing promoter in world boxing at the moment. But uh, the, other, the, the rest of it, I'm just going to put them in the mix, but... You'd have to say Eddie's number one for what he's done, hasn't he? And he's only 40. Uh, so we've done Al Heyman, we've done Eddie Earn, we've done Luda Bella, we've done Dennis Sobson, we've done Mick Hennessy. Frank Warren. Now, somebody who, I'm not, who, who shall rena remain nameless once said to me, Frank Warren, old fish eyes Frank, Frank Warren could survive a nuclear blast. Now, is it true that the only things that survive nuclear blasts are cockroaches? I don't know. I don't know. That's what somebody told me. I don't know. But Frank Warren is the original comeback kid. He's been shot, lost half a lung, lost three, four stone, and come back. But what, what one thing Frank Warren is, and one thing I admire about Frank Warren is. He's got a heart, he's got will, he's got that will to win, and he's boxing. When it looked like Frank Warren were down and out, he tried to build armies. Do you remember? Do you remember the photograph? Nicola, insert this photograph at this point in the video if you can. A photograph where they all had their hands like this. Frank Maloney, Frank Warren, Barry McGuigan, Ricky Hatton. They were all joining forces to take Eddie Earn on. Because Frank had no money at the time, he was struggling. That didn't work out. Now, since then, Frank's obviously piggybacked onto the back of Bob Arum. And it looks to me like maybe Bob Arum could be calling shots. Who knows? But Frank Warren's managed to survive. He's kept going with Box Nation and he's managed to piggyback onto BT Sport. Whether or not he stays with BT Sport, I don't know because... Frank Warren always seems to fall out with TV companies down the line, so he'll always have Box Nation as his backup. 
but the way I see it is this, Frank Warren, if you snapped him in half, he'd be like Steven Gerrard, wouldn't he? If you snap Steven Gerrard in half, what's it say? He says Liverpool, doesn't it? If you snap Frank Warren in half, what does it say? He says, do me a favour. No, it doesn't. It says boxing, doesn't it? It says boxing. He does what he says on the tin, Frank Warren. And he's had great fighters, hasn't he? Look at the guys he's had that were not in the GB team. Nathan Cleverly. World title from debut. Yeah, he's had Billy Joe Sona's world title from debut. And he was in the GB team, but... Frank Warren gets it, doesn't he? He took Carl Zaggy to the world title, but he didn't have him from debut. He put Carl Zaggy Kessler fight on. He put Kevin Kelly on with Nazim Ahmed in New York. You know, Frank Warren's a big dog. He's been at it since 1980. He was putting unlicensed un, un, uh, fights on in the 70s with Lenny McLean. You know, the guy out of Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels. Frank Warren is a big dog and he has to be given respect. I'm not a fan of how he does business because I have heard some stories that I'm not going to repeat but he's a hard-nosed businessman. If you take him on he's tough. He'll stand his ground and he'll also take you to court and sue you. He's a tough tough businessman. He's got to be respected. He's stood the test of time. He must be pushing 65 year old now. So what, what is, how old is Frank Warren? He, he must be 65, surely. I don't know, is it, I don't know, but either way, Frank Warren, I think he's 67, is he? Frank Warren is a big dog, right, in boxing, and he's been at it years. He knows the game, he knows when the timing's right. He knew when to get Costa Zoo, didn't he? The timing was just right. Now, the way I see it is this, he's here to stay and I think it's great that his son George and the other one Francis who Dennis is good mates with I think it's good that uh, they're involved in boxing because they talk a lot of sense I don't know Francis that well and, I, and I, I don't agree with a lot of what he says but he's passionate about boxing the other kid, I think he's a smart kid that George I hear him talking, he's more of a behind scenes man but I like him I like Bobby Warren, I've met him. I met Bobby in... Uh, <laughs> I actually met him in a toilet. Not in a cubicle toilet, so don't be getting it wrong way. I actually met him in the toilet. He was coming out of the toilet and I was going in in St. St. David's Hotel and uh, in Cardiff. And he was with somebody else and he had Crombie on and uh, Chelsea boots. You know, proper proper mod rocker Londoner and he's a character really Bob, Bobby Warren I like him I like him he's a character Den's good mate to him as well Bobby he's alright I don't think Den and Frank will ever be best mates but we, we like Bobby and I like Alfie as well is he Bobby's son or is he Bobby's nephew I met him in Cardiff well he's a nice kid as well and he's involved in boxing Alfie so I think it's good that all of them are involved in boxing it's it grows, doesn't it? If, if, if I could get my lad involved in boxing, I doubt he would, he's only six years old. But if he wanted to be involved in boxing when he was older, I'd encourage it. But you've got to go in with, you've got to have a plan B. So, because there's no money in it. <laughs> but Frank Warren, he stood the test of time and you'd have to say, you know, he, he's, he's challenging Eddie Hearn for number one spot, isn't he? You know, he's coming up strong, isn't he? He's got Tyson Fury, Billy Joe, Josh Warrington, Carl Frampton. He's got Leeds cornered, Ireland cornered. He's got Tyson over in America, and he's got Billy Joe. Who on his day, you could say Billy Joe Saunders, he's probably the number one pound for pound fighter at middleweight in world boxing. Whether he gets the fight against Canelo, I don't know. It looks like Canelo's moving up a weight. But you'd have to say Billy Joe Saunders is, on his day, oh he's not crashed into my mirror, on his day you'd have to say that Billy Joe Saunders could be the best middleweight in world boxing. He beats Golovkin for me. Canelo, I think Canelo will be weight drain at 160, I think Bill turns him on his head, they don't want it. Slick Southport. 
But Frank Warren, you'd have to say, he's a big dog and he's got to be respected and he stood the test of time. Frank Warren were promoting before my 10th birthday. I'm 49 in a couple of months. So, uh, I'm not sure how that ended up that because it turned off. So, just finishing off there on Frank Warren. Frank Warren's a big dog and he has to be respected. Uh, I'm not sure how that last video ended because I couldn't see it writing because of the sun. But, uh, Callus Howland. Callus Howland. I don't really know what to say about Callus Howland. He's got this image of this raging cokehead. Uh, probably because he's always gaining on videos. I don't know what he does. I don't know what he shoves up his nose. If he shoves anything up his nose, it might just be Vic Sinus. I don't know and I don't care. But, you'd have to say he's learnt well off his dad, him and his brother Nissa, Nissi. They're like Eddie Earn, they've had it gifted them, haven't they? But, it's not their fault. It's not their fault that they're born into money, is it? It's not their fault. That it's, you know, Callis Howland and Eddie Earn, they probably strike me as... I think if they'd have been born not into money, I think they would have still made it. I think they would have done. Humans, we adapt. I mean, when I first went to prison, I used to think, God, how do they cope in solitary confinement? These other people who were telling me they've been in solitary confinement for months, and they got out, they got back up onto their wings with me. Sorry for diversing a bit. And I used to think, Jesus, I'm glad I had a job in this jail at the time, and I was out my cell all day, and I think, God, I don't think I could do that. And then obviously, down the line, a few more sentences down the line, I ended up in solitary confinement for 11 months. And I coped with it. I found it hard at first, but as human beings we adapt. And I think that Eddie Hearn, I think Eddie Hearn would make a few quid in whatever job he were in. And we don't have to dig him. I'm not going to dig Eddie out in every video. He's an hard worker. He's probably up every morning, six o'clock, and he's probably getting in bed at night, he probably cat naps on odd, odd, odd hour here and there, on planes and that. His life will be turned upside down, Eddie Hearns, with work he's got on. You know what I mean? But, uh, Change the colour, Nicola, from green to, to, to blue or something. You can hardly read that. Change it so I can see it, it doesn't look very clear that. I'll change the capital letters on it so it looks clearer. The, the letters don't look clear. But uh, Callis Howland, he's probably... Let me shut this window. Callis Howland, he's probably a hard worker now, his dad... Kala Sauerland's dad, Willy Sauerland, you know, they, they, they corner the market in Germany, haven't they? So, they, they, they've, had, uh, they've had it good for years, haven't they, over there? But the reason I'm not a big Sauerland fan is because my close friend Robin Reed, his, his uh, loss against Sven Ocker were voted one of the worst ever robberies in foreign soil on a British boxing fighter. If anybody wants to watch a fight, Google Robin Reed versus Sven Otka YouTube. Watch that fight and then if you tell me, tell me what you think about it in the comments section because that fight broke Robin Reed's heart. Right? Broke his heart. It was for two belts. Broke his heart. And that referee, Roger Tillerman, should have been ashamed of himself. And uh, there were a big investigation after that into things that were going on in Germany. And Carlos Sauerland knows because too many fighters were appealing decisions in Germany. Now, it cost Robin Reed £15,000 to appeal that decision, fifteen grand, and he didn't get nowhere with it. Fifteen grand. Uh, he ended up, one of them wouldn't hear the appeal, one of the belts, and I think the other one, the WBA, they heard the appeal and took the 15 grand or so they said. So Robin's manager said. I'm not going to say who his manager were at the time, but you know who you are. So, but it is what it is, isn't it? He got robbed, and that's why I'm not a big big lover at Sowlands. But he don't mean to say I don't respect them, alright? 
I didn't like how callous Allen was salivating out his mouth when Kessler squeaked by Froch in that fight that they had in, in Herning. I didn't like Callis Howland, you know, salivating in front of me and going like that before a decision were even made. No, I didn't like that because Froch is my all-time favourite fighter. He's also my pal and I didn't like that. But other than that, I respect him and his brother Nissi. I think they're always coming out with great things. I think the World Boxing Super Series is great. I think uh, the World Super 6 were great as well. I don't think the, the World Boxing Super Series is as good as the Super 6 because Carla Sowerland, uh, cause Callum Smith sorry, won it, but who did he really beat? Who did he beat? Who? Who did he beat? Who? Come on. He beat... He beat... Come on, we know we beat, don't we? He beat George Groves who were injured. I don't, I'm not counting them other wins as elite wins. George Groves were half the fighters he won when he fought Froch. And I thought, Calisau, uh, Cal I thought Callum Smith had a gift, but it's a good idea, but I think it's these bo World Boxing Super Series things, I think they're dragging on too long. So, and I think Eddie Hearn made a mistake not putting him on Sky, but Taylor against Progre is a great fight, so I respect them for thinking outside the box and doing something different and who knows if ever I mean Sir Callis Howland's company I might get on with him but like I said I'm still not over the fact that he was salivating, salivating when, when, when Froch lost against Kessler I'm, I'm not over that yet and I'm not over the Andre Ward fight yet either so but one day I'll be over it and I think one day Carl will be over it as well but only joking. Uh, Callis Howland, I respect them, they're in the mix, they have been years, they've been promoters years, so... And then it comes to the big three over in America, the, or the big other three after Luda Bella. Don King, pfft, what can we say about Don King? Used to do numbers in Cleveland, didn't he, Don King? Uh, he promoted Rumble in the Jungle, you know, he went to the fight in Kingston, Jamaica with Joe Frazier against George Foreman. He arrived in a limousine with Joe Frazier and he left in a lim limousine with George Foreman. He put Rumble in the Jungle on with Ali, he thought he could pull a fast one on Ali and uh, Ali ended up beating Foreman and f sent Foreman into despair for about three, four years made him depressed but at the end of the day Don King he stood the test of time what is he 88 year old or something 89 or something he's 80 odd year old isn't he and he's upset a lot of people I doubt very much there'll be many people at his funeral uh, obviously he killed two people isn't he but I'm not going to go into that Don King was Mr. Boxing in the 80s. He was the guy you went to if you wanted to go put a good heavyweight fight on. He had Julio Cesar Chavez. The list is endless to his work with Holyfield, Mike Tyson, Larry Holmes, Ali, Joe Fraser, George Foreman. You know, he's always in the thick of it, isn't he? And he'll always have my respect, Don King. Dennis has done deals with Don King. He, he said he's a very... Dennis says to me he's very sharp, he's very quick with numbers and rules and he knows his job. His job is a promoter. A lot of people don't know what a promoter's job is. A promoter's job is to put an event on and generate as much money possible for the participants taking place in the event. That's his job and I think that Don King he's made a lot of millionaires in boxing. He's also ripped off a lot of people as well. Now, I just think it's in his nature. He ripped uh, one of Dennis's friends off, Tim Witherspoon, although he settled out of court years later. I think that Don King, uh, I think he just, it's in his nature to rip you off. He just can't help himself. Even though, you know, he's probably worth about half a billion. I think that Don King, he just cannot help himself. It's just in his nature to rip you off. Um, I don't think many people will shed a tear when he's gone. 
I don't know. But uh, all I can say is that I think he's been a good boxing promoter. How he handles his business, if he can get away with it, he's going to get away with it. If people are going to let him, they're going to let him, aren't they? This is why a lot of boxers need to get good advisors behind them. But Don King put some great fights on of the 20th century. And he's probably going to put more on. He seems to have stood the test of time, doesn't he? Uh, which brings me to the last two. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya, well, golden boy. Seems to have been around years, doesn't it, golden boy? Seems to have been around years. He put great events on. They've got Canelo, aren't they? Canelo Alvarez. Uh, he won with Bob Arum, won he, Oscar De La Hoya, but the, they've been around years, Golden Boy. He's got Bernard Hopkins and Shane Mosley help, helping him. So I think he'll always do all right, Oscar De La Hoya, but if you take Canelo, take Canelo out of Oscar De La Hoya's camp, or stable, whatever you want to call it, take Canelo out, and uh... <laughs> I've just been mentioning that in the video. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thumbnail. That put that up now. Yeah, thanks for the Viagra porky. Yeah, uh... the green one. The green one, not the black. Try a different colour around that green. No, no, go for the red one, Nicola. Go for the red one and then we can change it after a few days. They're both good. Okay. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya. If Canelo Alvarez decides to retire or gets beat, right? Where's Oscar De La Hoya going to go? Who's his next star that he's going to get? Because he's milking this Canelo one, isn't he? They only wanted to fight Golovkin when he got old. They don't want to fight Billy Joe, right? He's had a few decisions, Canelo, that you'd think, think he got beat there. How he got a draw off one judge against Mayweather, I don't know. But, he is a damn good fighter, Canelo, you'd have to say that. But he's also a protected fighter in some aspects. Would you want to see Canelo, Callum Smith? Yes. Who would you say is going to win that fight? I'd say it's a pick and fight. I'd say it's a pick and fight, that. But if it went to points, Callum Smith's not going to get a decision in America, is he? Or Mac, Mac, hey, go. On. So, but it is what it is, isn't it? But this is how I look at it, right? I think at the moment, the rumours doing the rounds that Oscar De La Hoya is interested in signing Andy Ruiz. I can see that happening down the line if he beats Joshua in rematch. I can see that happening. But if he loses against Joshua and Al Heyman lets him go, would he be keen to sign him then? Yeah, Oscar would still sign him, but he wouldn't have control, would he? Like he'd have if Ruiz had all the belts. Ruiz is Mexican in his blood as well, don't forget. So... But, yeah, but Tech Canelo out of his stable, where's he going, Oscar De La Hoya? Where is Oscar going without Canelo Alvarez? Who has he got that's any good? Is it Diego De La Hoya? He's just been knocked out, hasn't he, or beat? So, it'd be interesting, but I think Oscar De La Hoya, I think Canelo is his meal ticket. Him and, him and Bernard Hopkins are basically pimps aren't they they're pimps they used to complain about promoters when they were boxing and now look what they're doing to Canelo they're just taking off Canelo aren't they they're dining out off the Canelo uh, Canelo money but like I said Canelo is not going to be here forever is he if, if ever Canelo leaves Oscar I guarantee you now sure as eggs are eggs the old stack of cards will come tumbling down for Oscar the same with Eddie Hearn if Joshua loses, the whole stack will come tumbling down. That's just my opinion, and I'm entitled to it. 
Shout out to Bullseye. Thank you very much for the uh, bubblegum little trees. I think they're brilliant. The last one I'm going to come to now, out of all these in this video, which should be 30, 46, and 15, 61 minutes. This will be about 65 minutes, this video. The last one is the one, the only, I've not even mentioned Barry Hearn by the way, but the one, the only, Bob Arum, aka the Bob Father. The Bob Father. He's like uh, Michael Myers, isn't he? He just will not go away, will he? He's like a. Bob Arum is like a fucking irritating boil that you get on your ass. You know when you get a boil on your ass and what you do when you get a boil on your ass, you go to a doctor in England, they say to you, put toothpaste on the boil over two days and it kills it. Save you going to the, to the pharmacy or chemist to get medication. But Bob Arum, toothpaste would not kill a Bob Arum boil on your ass, would it? Bob Arum just will not fucking go away, will he? Eh? Bob Arum will see us all out, won't he? Could you imagine him shuffling about, 110 year old with a walking stick? Telling us, yeah, it's a good fight down the line. That's Bob Ar you know what You know what it's going to say on Bob Arum's tombstone? Robert down the line Arum. That's what it's going to say on his fucking tombstone. Because the guy just do not want to put any fights on, does he? He keeps chatting this Tyson Fury while the rematch shit. That's not going to... Come on. We know that's not going to happen, don't we? We know that is not going to happen, don't we? If that happens, I'll close my YouTube channel down for good. Alright? I will close my YouTube channel down for good if that fight happens. I swear to God. Because it ain't going to happen. But Bob Arum, he had Mayweather, he had Oscar De La Hoya, Little Oscar. You know, he had Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. You know, he, he, he's done well, hasn't he? He's had some great fighters he's worked with over the years. And just a, just a great boxing promoter. He just won't stand the test of time. He's, sorry, he's stood the test of time, hasn't he, Bob Arum? He just... He's like Jason out of Friday 13th, isn't he? Or Michael Myers out of Halloween. He just will not go to sleep, will he? His work ethic is unbelievable. So, shout out to Bob Arum. But, honourable mentions to Barry Hearn. Barry Hearn. He's been a boxing promoter over the years. And I prefer Barry to Eddie. Uh, because he's come up the hard way, hasn't he, Barry? He's had nothing given from Dagenham. Uh, Kathy Dover. I know Dennis gets on with Kathy Dover. I've not mentioned her, not because she's a woman or anything. It's just that... Uh, I don't know, really, why I've mentioned her, because she's got Kovalev and that, and I just... I don't know. I don't know why I've not mentioned her, but she's in the mix, isn't she? But I wanted to mention the ten... You know, stroke MTK that I like, but you know, Barry Yearn, you could put him in there, but he's, he's not involved in boxing now, it's little Lord Fontoroy, isn't it? And you know, you could put Kathy Dover in there, couldn't you, from main events? So, with, with main events and MTK and Barry Yearn, you've got 13 boxing promoters there, and you could give mentions, like I said, to. Neil Marsh, Steffi Ball, Carl Greaves, you give them a mention, couldn't you? Steve Rafe, you give him a mention. Phil Jeffries, you know. Uh, the guy in Scotland, I forgot his name now. Uh, the guy who had Alex Arthur, Alex somebody. He's, he's a good boxing promoter as well. Uh, but... Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's a tough, tough sport, boxing. It's a very, very tough sport. 
and boxing promoters don't get as much respect. They get a lot of, we hammer them a lot and I'm, I'm one of them people that hammers boxing promoters. I'm always the first person to complain if, if I don't think I'm getting value for money, but I think that a lot of people need to go look at a lot of boxing promoters balance sheets and see what risks some of these people are taking and I'm telling you now honestly the average man in the street wouldn't do it I see Dominic Ingle he's always got plenty to say for himself and he Dominic about boxing promoters and this and that well my message to you Dominic is go and put a show on and let's see you do it go and get TV and put a show on at Ponsford in Sheffield in your hometown and let's see what you think about it because uh, it's uh, it's a it's an expensive hobby to be involved in and that's what boxing is to me a hobby but uh, it can be very expensive and time consuming and every one of them people there that I've just mentioned from your Luda Bellas to your Dennis Hobson, Frank Warren, Eddie Earn, Mick Hennessy, Oscar De La Hoya, Bob Arum, Don King, Calla Sauerland, Main Events, MTK, Frank Warren all them people there, Neil Marsh, Steffi Bull, Carl Greaves, uh, still forgot that guy's name in Scotland, it's going to do, my head, gonna do my, my head in there, going to do my head in that, but all, all them people deserve respect, Alex Morrison, Alex Morrison, all them people deserve respect because they put their hands in the pockets and had a go. If you're having a go and you're putting your hands in your pockets, well, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you deserve respect. It's like people leave awful comments on YouTube for me and they send some awful emails. I'm not going to go into detail because I sound like a broken record. Some of the emails, like emails I get are disgusting. They're either double agents wanting to find information out and I just send them on a wild goose chase anyway, or it's just pure threats and violence and filth and disgusting things and people should be ashamed of themselves and I save every one of them because you never know when you might need them do you but this is how I look at it if anybody don't like it don't watch this channel if you don't like it what you do you just go like that with your remote don't you bump you turn off a channel go watch something else don't watch it or if you think you can do better, a better job, let me see your YouTube channels because a lot of these people who leave comments have no subscribers or one subscriber. I don't have that many subscribers myself. But what I do know is that 48% of people that watch my channel don't subscribe. There you go. So instead of having 1,700 subscribers, I've probably got about 2,500 because we get the things off YouTube, the analytics, and it tells us everything. So 48% of you can't even subscribe, come on! Get subscribing and get growing the channel, get behind me, can't you see what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to educate the people that don't know the ins and outs of how boxing works. Get subscribing, press the subscribe button, or go and look in your mirror and say to yourself, you know, am I that sad I don't even want to subscribe? This kid here is trying his hardest. <laughs> it is what it is, isn't it? But peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. And keep supporting all them promoters there. All them promoters I've just mentioned. All together there's 16, 17 names there. I give you a register and a good 10 and we ended up with 16, 17. All them guys there, if they've got shows on, support them. Support them. Go to their shows, watch them on TV if you can. Get behind it because boxing's going to take off really big soon. And I'm going to end with something here now on this video. I was going to put this on a certain video on its own, but you know, in fact, I think I'm going to do. This is going to be on its on a video on its own. So tune into this next video because you're going to learn some. Of it. Right. 
So peace out, keep on trucking, keep sporting boxing, it's a great sport and watch this next video, you're going to be impressed.